Today we're gonna talk about punching in movies. Cinematic violence has existed for almost as long as cinema itself, and for all the millions of violent acts portrayed on screen, there's probably none more common than the punch. It's something we've seen on screen so many times that it feels entirely ordinary, just another part of everyday life. If movies are to be believed, most people either punch someone or get punched every couple weeks. At this point, it's rare for a punch in a movie to surprise us. What got me thinking about this was when I recently revisited Ryan Johnson's debut film, Brick, which I was reminded is a really, really good movie. Johnson's filmmaking craft throughout is masterful, exercising total control. And one thing that really stood out to me this time was the way that he portrayed the punches. Like this one. Now, we've seen this kind of thing a million times before, but here, you feel it. There's real impact. And it's not because the punch is fueled by a huge emotion or anything like that. It's not even an especially important moment in the film. But it's because Johnson is using fairly simple filmmaking techniques with a huge amount of skill that this becomes more than just another guy punching someone in the face. In real life, punches are jarring. They're not lethal, but they're still shocking and violent, and an unexpected punch in a public place is chaotic. So the question is, when we've seen untold thousands of on-screen punches, how do you make one that has the same impact as a real-life one? Well, let's go back to Brick. The scene here, between Brendan and Dode, plays out in classic shot-reverse-shot coverage, until the punch. Here, Johnson breaks entirely from that format, shifting style, perspective, and even frame rate. It begins with a close-up of Dode, as his eyes suddenly flick upwards, then we cut to his POV, with Brendan now dominating the frame as he swings his fist right toward the camera. Then it cuts to a wider profile shot in slow motion, as we see the completion and effect of the punch. The cigarette flies out of Dode's mouth. The POV shot provided the shock, the slow motion provides the force. Yes, this could have been executed with the same standard shot-reverse-shot coverage, but in the context of the scene, the punch is jarring. It changes the entire dynamic and energy of what's happening. And we're surprised to see it coming from Brendan, a guy who's not especially imposing or threatening, who spends most of the movie slouching with his hands stuffed in his pockets. So by making the visualization of the punch as impactful as it is within the scene, we feel it. Just like Dode does. Okay, well, maybe not exactly how Dode does. It's worth noting here that Johnson also edited the film himself. The guy is really good. Now, this is not to say there's anything wrong with traditional movie punches. Far from it. And the stylized subjectivity of that punch in brick, or especially this other punch in brick, isn't appropriate for every movie. In fact, there's something that can be extremely satisfying about a big, classic movie punch, with a huge hook to the jaw with a deep thud shot from an over-the-shoulder angle. This one in Groundhog Day is hilarious. Ned? This one provides a great moment of catharsis to the end of Die Hard. <laughs> so what elements go into a movie punch? There's the angle, which in most instances is chosen to hide the fact that the fist is not actually connecting with the face. Shooting from the side makes that several inch gap clearly visible, so usually the classic over-the-shoulder method is used. But a risk of shooting punches from this angle is that most audiences know how it works. That's how punches have always been shot, because that's how you hide it. These can be effective, but if the intention is to give the punch some authentic impact, to make it feel real, it's often more effective to use an angle to which audiences haven't become so desensitized. So look at this punch from Tropic Thunder. Sorry, man. Even though this is a silly comedy, it feels way more painful than, say, this one. Because instead of using a method we're used to of hiding the punch, it presents it in a wide, objective angle. Editing can accomplish multiple goals. By cutting at the right moment, it can hide the gap between the fist and the face. Like the punch in Brick, which cuts to the profile shot a few frames after the point of connection. And a classic editing trick is to cut out the one frame where the fist crosses the face, making it seem even faster and harder. The performances, above all, are an indicator of tone. They tell us whether a punch is funny... What? ...or serious. 
as well as how severe and painful it really is. And finally, there's the sound design. This can make all the difference in how a movie punch feels. The deep pop of an Indiana Jones punch is satisfying and exciting, while the wet smack of a Fight Club punch is a little sickening. Punches can also communicate a lot. A single punch can tell us all about a movie's approach to violence. This one, with the huge impact and slightly comical reaction, tells us that the violence is heightened, and for lack of a better word, fun movie violence. We're not meant to take this too seriously. This one tells us the violence is messy and painful and much closer to reality. And this one Some villain just waiting for me chance that tells us the violence is nasty and cruel and upsetting. Punches can communicate character information. In Wonder Woman, we see the contrast between when Diana throws a punch and when Steve Trevor does. Without saying anything, the punches visualize the power dynamic between them. Punches can be funny. They can hurt. They can be triumphant. They can be dramatic. Filmmaking is all about choices. There's an impossibly huge number of decisions that go into every moment of a film. Even a moment as quick as a single punch contains countless choices, each of which can lead to a drastically different result. Every choice has a meaning, and every choice has an impact. And look, not to start a whole conversation about violence in cinema, but punches are fun. There's something pure and cinematic and cathartic about them. So if you're a filmmaker and you're putting punches in your movie, Give them some thought, and make sure they're good. Because you can communicate a lot with just a single punch. Show me. That's how you punch. Hey guys, I want to thank you so much for watching this, and I also would like to thank Squarespace for sponsoring the video. If you want to make a website, and you want it to look great, and be a super simple process, you should really check out Squarespace. They've got beautiful, award-winning designer templates, 24-hour customer service. You don't have to install anything or upgrade anything, and hey, I have been using Squarespace for my personal website for the past two years, and speaking from experience, I genuinely highly recommend it. For 10% off your first purchase, just go to squarespace.com slash Patrick, right there. There's a bunch of social media links if you wanna yell at me about stuff across the internet, and I will see you next Wednesday.